Welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this blob tracking effect totally for free, even if you're new to this. As you can see, I'm using the free version of the designer, where I have limited to two blob tracks. But this is the first time I'm seeing this software. You'll need to install it on the designer derivative.ca to download here and download the Mac or Windows version. I use the non-commercial version, which is totally free, but you're limited to resolution and obviously block tracking, but I will show you a workaround today. So I created a new blank project. If this is your first time using Tool Designer, to add a new node, you either double click or you can press tab on your keyboard, or you can also right click, add operator. So we'll start by adding a video clip. For this you need a movie file in. Then you select then you select the video you want to track. So as you can see, the because we still have the non-commercial version, we're limited resolution by 1280 by 1280. So it has been resized to 1280 to 675. So I'm gonna use a fit to put it to 1280 by 720 and change to fill. Now, uh, to get the white screen, you need to middle click with your mouse. You can see now the size is 1280 by 720. Then we can add uh, a null. To do this, your old press tab null and we'll call this one video because this is going to be our main video that we will call back later for other stuff. So let's add another node just because then need to add a cache, a difference, connect the, the node to the top of the difference and the bottom, the cache, then in the cache, set the cache size to 2 and the step index to 1, the output index to minus 1, so it gets the last frame. And so like this, we're going to do the difference between this frame and the last frame. So as you can see, it's stuttering. Why is that? It's because the design of FPS is not set to the same FPS as the video. So if we go back to the original video, can see it's 25 frames per second so press down here FPS change it to 25 and we can see we don't get any more stuttering so now we need to add a, a blur and a threshold so we'll need to blur it quite a bit because we want it to look a bit like blobs, basically. So this will depend a lot on the video you use, depending how much blur you want. Like this could look good. Okay, so you should fit with this. So now that we have our blurred video with the motion, we're going to use the little trick to not use the blob tracking from Touch Designer. So use a, a script and connect this. So I'm going to add a comment. This is the script we're going to be using. I'll put it in the description because uh, it's going to be a bit long if I type it out. It uses basic OpenCV. If you never used it, I recommend having a look at the documentation. It's very straightforward. So, as you can see, it's on cook. We will use a parameter. So you see, I added op area parents because we need to add a constant and call it area parent. So we min max and then area parents for the name of the constant. We can change this uh, 
This is just a way to access touch designer nodes from inside the script and you can go use it to bring in info in and we're also going to use this that to bring info out of the script so we need this area param i said that for example this is going to be the minimum area minimum size of the blob 80 and maybe maximum size 1000 and you can change this so let's take the whole script copy Press the little star to make it active. Zoom in until you become bigger. Then Command A, Command V, and Control if you're on Windows. Now the script is in. As you can see there's an error because we're missing the um, our output. So we need to add a that. We need a table and we'll call it blob data. The exact name is important because in the script I put operation up op, operator blob data and then we're gonna append the rows to it with each square uh, rectangle and also with the initial ID UV width and height. Look, we get an error because I misspelled parameters and now it works. So, as you can see, we get way more than two with ID, which is reset to zero, U and V, which is X and Y, but just um, normalized. You can see we normalize them here and then we have the width and height of which are also normalized I think yeah everything is normalized so basically once you have this data you can do whatever you want for this example I'm gonna show you how to add rectangles well how to draw the boxes that it gives you and also how to draw lines this here and we need to change it to that to chop that to to chop so we need for the output channels per column because we want a channel per each column the first row is the names and first column is values so we have id uv width and height this is good so then we need to rescale, so we need to bring it into a math. Select U and width. We're going to multiply by operator video, which is the first video we added after the pre-processing slash. So video width divided by video height. So let's bring it into a null and let's call this blobs. Okay, so we have all the data we need. If you're on the experimental version, you can use this rectangle, it'll be more performant. Otherwise, if you're on the normal version, you can just use a sub rectangle, then bring it. So this is important, you need to drag it, and then once you're holding it, press tab, then search for geometry in the composition, add a camera, add a material, a line material, and then bring this into this. You can see we get line, only the lines, only the outline. Then let's put the width near and far to one and you can choose whatever color you want i'll put it to red for now then we're gonna add a render so we need it to be up video dot width and video dot height 
yes and then we're gonna turn on instancing so it's gonna draw this rectangle everywhere we say it and with the size we say it so the default operation is gonna be blobs x u v from x and y and for scale because we can see we get really big rectangles everywhere so change it to width and height after this is going to correspond with what's happening on the on the video and so issue we get now is that this is not placed in a good spot so we need to go into the camera if you set it to author graphic set it to bottom left and then we're going to use the same ratio as last time so video at width divided by video dot height and then if we now use a composite bring this and also bring in I just use select to make it a bit cleaner and then put it to over and well, we have the squares over the video this is already quite nice so now let's add lines between the squares basically all the info we need is already in this blob to make the lines we're gonna use let's add a select chop to select this blob data to bring it a bit further out so to get a little bit of space what you're gonna do is you go to a chop to you're going to want to set so tx ty to z we're going to use u and v which is our x and y and then x and y is this so we can remove p we don't have any z so we can see it connects all the rectangles together which is a bit much so you could add a splice so turn on output trim selection put a 0.5 percent and then time it to 15 so as you can see we get only a sub selection if you want a different type of line you can go and use a convert and so you can say so you need to go from Polygon to Bezier or to Nerbs curve, or is it maybe look a bit cleaner? You can have Bezier. The normal ish nerve curves I find looks quite nice. But once you have this line, it's basically the same where you connect it to a geometry. We can have the same camera and um, then the render. And you need a line material or a constant depending on what you want. So as you can see it's connecting our rectangles quite nicely. You can change the width of the line, change the color, you can change everything. And so if we want to add it to our video, so exactly the same as last time, composite, take this, this and over. So we can see they are connecting. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to add the text onto the blobs. So same select as last time. We're going to need to change the U and Vs to pixel values, so denormalize them in a way. So we're going to have a math. And we're going to multiply by OP video and width. But we only want the U to be timed by 1280. Then we need a second math where we're going to multiply the V 
by the height. Okay, so 720. And we're going to use a text chop. To use a text chop, if you have a look at the Touch Design uh, wiki, to access the wiki, you can just press the help button. So as you can see, we need X, Y, and text in our DAT. So we're going to use the specification DAT. So for now, we have ID, UV, and width. So let's use a rename and let's rename it to text X and Y. Let's remove, uh, let's only select ID, U, and V because we don't need the width and height anymore. Change it to that and put include names and specification that. Voila. You can see we get all our numbers, but we need to change this to video out height, uh, width. And video that height. Then you can change your font, the size, the color. You can go crazy. Might just make them a bit smaller for now. Exactly the same as last time. Connect this with this. So we get just the numbers. Here we have the final result. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment if you have any suggestions on videos you'd like to see or anything. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.